What is going on, guys? We're back with another video, and we are doing another fantasy draft guide. Uh, this, of course, is going to be the updated regular season finale roster. So, of course, in case you didn't know how to do it, you have to go to custom rosters when you're loading up a roster for a franchise, and then you scroll over and you click fantasy draft. It's simple as that. All right, so I will admit it took me about four to five resets to get the pick I wanted. I wanted around anywhere from 15 to 17 because that's the guide I kind of work with here. I think you'll have about a four pick uh, leniency, but if you do want pretty much the exact same draft as me, I would just keep resetting. It's worth it if you really want one of those drafts. So pick one is almost always going to be Mahomes. It actually might always be Mahomes. Then you have Clowney, Garrett, Bosa, Lattimore, Mack, and Ward in the top 15, usually top 12. You can see Watt just went. Miles Garrett a few picks before, Clowney a few picks, Joey, Lattimore. That would be, Lattimore is one of my favorites to draft. Same with Denzel Ward. And then Mahomes, of course, number one, dethroned Jalen Flowers. I had to redo this earlier, and I, I said deflowered him, which is, uh, you know, a topic for a different day. I would take a wide receiver, or I would take Jair Alexander. Basically, those are the names that I would take. Where did Tyreek Hill? Tyreek Hill is still there. All right, so let's take a look at cornerback. Uh, you have really the only option I think worthy of taking here would honestly be Byron Jones. He's 25. He has star dev. You know, a lot of the other guys are going to be a lot older. 28 is, I mean, it's not dead, but I mean, if you're going to take a guy that's slightly better, you might as well just take the guy that's going to last you two more years. Uh, you know, you got safeties, but. Like I said, just like the first fantasy draft we did, wide receiver or corner should be first. And in my personal opinion, this could be the best value pick in the entire draft. Tyreek Hill, it's, was it 17? He's so fast. Fastest player in Madden. Probably history, technically. Uh, and just absolutely sick. So with pick 16, here is where, of course, you know, wide receiver or cornerback first two rounds. Guess what? <laughs> we didn't get a, a cornerback round one. This may seem like a reach. Uh, Byron Jones, I think, probably would have went a little bit earlier than this. But Jair Alexander, star dev, 84 overall. He's absolutely ridiculous. He is so sick. But the you could have probably zero picks every season for two years, and he'd still be a 95 to 99. I don't think there's a better value here. And I know I'm a Packers fan, but him and Denzel Ward are so great at devving up as corners. It's unbelievable. So, Mika Fitzpatrick went right one pick before us. Honestly, if he didn't, I would debate taking him right there. I know he's a little bit lower, maybe a little bit more debatable, but Star Dev, once again, is ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to try not to say that R word anymore. Uh, just going to show you who we missed out. So, uh, I do have Leighton Vander Esch as one of my guys. He's an early third, but sometimes he could slip. You know, if you can catch a Kenny Clark... I can't believe Rodgers lasted that long. Wow. Uh, but if you can catch a Kenny Clark... Uh, or a Leighton Vander Esch, where we're at. Maybe even a Larry, a Larius Dennard, <laughs> a Darius Leonard. Definitely take those guys. But there would still be a couple of guys there, like you've seen. You saw Rogers. Rogers would probably be the last guy I would even debate. But even him, I don't even know. That seems seems a little worrisome still. Also, guys like uh, Daniil Hunter, uh, Saquon Barkley, they would be gone. Uh, late second, Juju Smith-Schuster, guys like those who are really fun players, and you know they are very good. Uh, I think a Dion uh, Jones would be gone around there too. Uh, I know for a fact Miles Jack. I don't want C.J. Mosley. I know for a fact Miles Jack. He would be gone after this round. The thing now here is really tough. You have three real choices here: uh, is Jamal Adams. He's a very good player, obviously. 23 star dev, really good. Could even play hybrid for you. That's a really good player. Can't lie. Then you have basically, I don't know really what Kittle's you know, numbers look like lately, but basically the best tight end you can possibly draft, Hunter Henry. Or my personal choice, my favorite of the three, Roquan Smith, who's just absolutely insane. And I don't think you can pass up on a guy. I know I think he dropped from superstar to star dev, but once again, just like Jair, Totally worth it. No question about it. Here you basically have, in my opinion, I mean, obviously, I'll show you guys what we have. You know, a guy like Chris Jones, you can't really go wrong with. Uh, but you have two options, maybe three. So one of the options here, you know, guys, you're not going to get after this round. Bradley Chubb, star dev, great pass rusher. Alvin Kamara, I wouldn't take Alvin Kamara because we're probably going to be aiming for McCaffrey later. You know, Alvin Kamara really is just a different name 
uh, McCaffrey at this point. Even probably worse, technically. Uh, but the guy I'm going to go with is obviously going to be Lamar Jackson. I know he dropped in Dev. He's 21 years old, though, with 94 throw power. 94 speed, 95 excel, 95 agility. Absolutely the most ridiculous quarterback you can get in Madden. And, of course, late fourth, that is going to be the look. So we do have both of the names. Well, actually, we have one of the names. I don't know about the other guy. So this is a really tough one because, once again, he's Chris Jones isn't a very fast guy, but he's ridiculous. And I sent that one again. But he's actually very good. This is tough for me because I want them pass rushers kind not really early, but I want one decent pass rusher early. Once again, a little bit on the slower side, but he is very good. 25. How old is Yannick? 23. So I think you kind of have to go with the youngster, don't you? So this one, actually, I'm glad I took a look. This one's a bit of a toss-up for me. You have Yannick Ngakwe, who's 23. Really solid, great player. But then you also have Carl Lawson, who, uh, same age. I can't tell. I think he might be a little bit faster, but he has better strength. So honestly, it's a toss-up between the two. Carl Lawson. I actually had Yannick here in, you know, obviously I had to prep for the video a little bit. I had Yannick, but... I think Carl Lawson's a bit a bit better just because of the strength. So now here we have three choices. We have strong safety, Mr. Adrian Amos, who obviously can play a little bit of corner. Uh, a little bit worse at cornerback nowadays, regressed a little bit, but still very solid. And then you have right guard. Is it right guard? Yeah, right guard, Brandon Sheriff, 26 years of age, star dev, absolutely insane. And then the player I think I will be drafting of all of them which would be DeForest Buckner. I know you have Grady Jarrett here. He's 25, quick dev, uh, 89, 88, 88. DeForest Buckner, a little bit younger, uh, a little bit weaker, but he is huge. DeForest Buckner, basically almost all of these guides, 4-3 is going to be the way to go because it's just easier to draft overall. And now here, I think this is where we're going to end up taking our next wide receiver. Ooh, early, damn it. So I had early 7th... Um, where are they, actually? Holy crap, Adrian Amos. Corey Davis and them went actually really high. I had Corey Davis and Sterling Shepard as early uh, early 7th. I believe we're in the 7th round, right? It says 13. That's a BS. It's a BS statement. So, uh, yeah, so that's just not going to happen. But I wouldn't even say that we're necessarily drafting safety to play safety. Uh, so you have Andre Hall here who's quick dev. He's pretty solid. Uh, you have Jabril Peppers, maybe another uh, hybrid type that's pretty damn good. But then you also have Tyron Matthew, who could be easily one of the best uh, slot uh, corners you can get. This one's a bit tough for me. Don't worry about landing. We'll get to that in a minute. And I honestly don't even know where Jabril goes. But I think I'm going to go Jabril just for the age. Like I said, I think this is a pick that you should be making. A, a, some sort of safety on that one. One of the three that I mentioned, honestly. You also, I, I should have mentioned it, but you also had an option at Joel Batonio. Uh, which I think he's probably gone now. He is. And then here the pick, in my opinion, late ninth would be Evan Ingram. Basically the second best tight end in my... I mean, basic, pretty much the second best tight end just because how fast he is. Going to put him on the team. And then here early ninth would be guys... Early to mid ninth would be guys like Taylor Moten, uh, Darius Geis, uh, Josh Rosen, Landon Collins. I don't know how many of those guys are going to be here. So it's Josh Rosen here. Obviously we already took... Yeah, so Josh Rosen's here, but once again, honestly, after Lamar, your your options are gone. So you pretty much have to take Lamar really early. And damn, uh, what's his name? Landon Collins actually went. How many picks? But you know, these these will vary a little bit. How many picks ahead did he go? Uh, he went really high on this one. Landon went like pick five in this round. So I have actually had a really tough time with this pick. I don't even remember tracking Ryan Shazier's. Uh, like, what pick he goes. I'm thinking of a guy. I'm thinking of Ryan Shazier. Or the other option is Harold Landry. But he is a little bit down on the list. And there's other pass rushers we can get later. So I think I'm just going to take the value pick of Ryan Shazier here, honestly. So basically, this would be, uh, probably be a lineman now. So with that being said, I'm probably going to reach a little bit here. I'm going to take Rashawn Evans, who usually does go about a round before here. Uh, not the fastest guy in the world, but that hit power... You just can't teach. So Linder usually goes um, mid-12th, but once again, going to reach again because we missed one of our picks. Supposed to go 52 overall. I mean, that's not bad at all. So for this pick, I had Vita Vea, 
but he did drop to quick dev. So if you're running a 3-4, which obviously I recommend the 4-3 for this, Vita Vea is probably the guy. But then again, if you wanted to wait till late 13, Mo Hurst is also there. So uh, that's an option, option, obviously, as well. So honestly, with this pick, it's kind of just choose what you want. Because this pick, I had us taking Linder, but obviously we took him a round ago. So I also have a DT here. It would be kind of uh, a Vita Vea or a Mo Hurst. But honestly, I don't really like both of those, either of those picks, because you you can get a guy like Danny Shelton, uh, like mid seventeen. And if you're you know you're the running back type of guy, and you don't want just Christian, or you just want two backs, or I don't know, Jay Ajayi, Leonard Fournette are the two options here. Uh, Jay obviously kind of regressed a little bit because he got hurt, uh, pretty solid still. And then Fournette, he did drop in Dev, but he still is one of the best power backs in Madden, if not the best power back. Which I think I will. I'm just going to take him. Uh, once again, I think pick 13. What, what was that? 13? Or is that 12? So pick 12. I think you can kind of just choose who you want. And here, because I have guards, uh, basically I'm going to be looking at Shaq Mason and Ali Marpet. Uh, I don't know if they're both going to be here because I kind of have Shaq and Ali Marpet going around 14 early to mid. So really, I'd go with whoever's best available. 25 for Ali Marpet. Shaq is also 25. Uh, Ali looks a little bit better in my opinion, and he's the top of his class. I'm going to go with Ali Marpet and hope Shaq Mason is there next round. He went four picks before us. That's unfortunate. Last time I did this, he was there. So once again, it's going to vary here and there, but that would have been a really good back-to-back -back pick. So honestly, not having Shaq there did kind of ruin it a little bit for me. So instead, I think we're going to go with Frank Ragnar. Uh, I know you have uh, Will Hernandez there, but we will get him a little bit later. Uh, so now at what pick? So we're we're can, you know we're moving ahead a little bit far here. Uh, pick fifteen, I would have had uh, Jordan Willis or Sweet and Jared Davis, but Jared, I mean I don't even care about Jared Davis anymore. But I think because sometimes Christian McCaffrey does go early sixteen, I don't want to lose Christian. I think he was he's almost always the best value you can get in any single draft. So Christian McCaffrey is going to be our guy, of course, star dev. I mean, look how sick he is. I mean, he maybe I was a little wrong with saying uh, he's better than Kamara, but when you compare when you have to take each of them, I think he is better than Kamara, technically. I think one of the biggest uh, misses for me is going to be the fact that we didn't get uh, Andrew Norwell and slash or uh, Shaq Mason. But here with pick 16, once again, I'm a little ahead of my picks. This is where I would like to take him at 17. But in case, you know, because we're a little bit ahead, I'm going to take Will Hernandez here. Having that quick dev is going to suck a little bit more than, you know, obviously the star. Pretty obvious uh, analysis there. But he's still a great player, obviously. So here, I would like to go DT. And this one kind of depends a little bit on what type of defense you're running. Once again, this is built mainly as a 4-3 defense. But you have a couple options. So if you're going 4-3, the best choice probably is going to be Derek Nandi. Overall, still a great player anyways. 22 years of age. Uh, obviously, you have guys like Malcolm Brown as well. Could work out for you. But I'm looking for the guys a little bit higher strength. So uh, honestly, <laughs> Derek Nandi doesn't even fit that bill. But if you are in a 3-4, I would not go with anyone other than Danny Shelton or DJ Reader. Who, uh, they're both... Actually, Danny might be a little bit older, is he? 87 strength for DJ. Uh, where is Danny? The thing is, they're both going to be pretty slow, so I might take the guy that's a little bit older just for the strength. But that's going to be a tough one. I think Derek Nandi, though, since we're in a 4-3, is the best bet. Andy is quite a bit younger. Now here, if you decided that you weren't going to get McCaffrey or you just straight up missed him, you could go with a guy like Phil Lindsay. A bit old as a rookie, 24 years of age. Star dev, though. Pretty solid. It's all about the star dev. That's where I would go if that's what you're going to do. But here, because that's not what we're going to do, I'm going to reach a little bit, I think. And so basically, you're going to have two options. Where the hell is Ronnie? There's no way Ronnie's gone. Did I miss him? Is he lower over than I thought he was? If Ronnie's gone, that'll actually be a shocker because I don't even have him going for another round. Well, since Ronnie Harrison isn't there, I am going to be dropped. Now, this is a debatable one, of course. Uh, so you have Austin Blythe, I believe his name is, 26 normal dev he's an 83 overall though he's very solid 87 strength you know 83 across the board for everything else but then you also have forest lamp is two years younger with a better dev uh, a little bit worse in the stats but he's very good 
I mean, obviously, it's not going to look as good from my standpoint, but I want the younger guy. I want the guy with better dev. I want the longer term. That's, you know, that's the way I play my franchises. Obviously, that's completely up to you, though. And here, this is where I would debate a guy like Shaquem Griffin, assuming he is still here. Guess he's not here. I, I really don't know what's going on. Like, everything basically went according to plan up until, like, the last three rounds where everyone's just kind of mixed up here for some reason. So, because I have a different name and uh, it's just not going to happen, I guess I'm going to go Billy Price here. Chark, who is, once again, he's a bit of a low overall, but if you can get over the overall and see the fact that he's absolutely insane and he's only 21, he's clearly worth the pick, clearly worth your time developing him. Might be a little frustrating, but 100% worth it. This is where I would take a guy like Josh Jackson. I know we're kind of rocking the Packers corners. Never really a good sign, but two really good developmental guys. Now, he's not going to dev up as quick as Jair, and he's not guaranteed to dev up. But if you can give me four or five picks a season with him, it'll be sick. Great player, of course. Once again, this is for players that, uh, that want someone new. Maybe a Marlon Mack here. This is where he's going to go. I wouldn't recommend it personally, but you know, if you're interested in someone new and maybe an Austin Eckler, but obviously that's not something I'm recommending. But yeah, this is honestly where I had us drafting Kaiser just as a backup, but I like Lamar and I'm not really worried about backup too much in, in a fantasy guide video. So I think just because this has been a little bit of a weird one, I'm not going to risk Gary and Connolly anymore and I'm going to take him. Normal Dev's rough, but he's only 23. Really good player. Of course, the guy we've been kind of waiting for to, to finish off the D-line for ages now, Marcus Davenport, really underrated in this game. Uh, well, just not even underrated, but just undervalued. You can see he's 6'6", 265, 21 years of age, quick dev. I know 75 is a little rough, but 78 power move, 76 block shed, and pretty damn fast for his size is easily worth starting on the edge. Like, I had a lot of these guys going, like, after this, unless they just went... So Jonathan Jones, Eli Apple were guys I had going right around here. Uh, I had Gesicki around this pick. Maddox, that makes sense. Like, I don't even know where Gesicki is. You know, Gesicki is basically the only guy worth it here, in my opinion. Like, you want a guy with some dev, you know, as your backup, and he's obviously super young. Really disappointed that that's the case there, that we missed him. So I guess I'm going to take the value pick, and I'm going to take Zay Jones here. So this is around the pick that you would see Justin Tucker go. And of course, hopefully my guy is here. Jake Elliott, of course, easily the best kicker in Madden. There's no question about it. No debate. Not even, like, maybe Tucker, but Jake Elliott's the best. So uh, obviously, Jake, T Jake Elliott's going to be my guy. And then because you took special teams, kicker, you might as well look to punter. Why not? Why not do it? Uh, best available. This is going to be a little bit tougher. Johnny Hecker is usually the guy that I go with. 28, Superstar Dev, 97, 97. J.K. Scott's pretty decent. I mean, if you're really going long-term like that, I would honestly say the only two options would be Michael Dixon or the best of all of them, which is Johnny Hacker. I'm going to take a look at Hack. He's also another option. So Hack, Michael Dixon, or uh, Johnny Hacker. I personally like Johnny Hacker the most, so I'm going to go with Johnny Hacker. And then basically at this point, you've completed your draft, and you can just take whoever the hell you want. Because we didn't get that backup tight end we wanted, we're going to get basically the best tight end in the game, Larry Fitzgerald. So obviously he doesn't drop anything, and he's a great run blocker. And then, like I said, you basically take whoever the hell you want. Once again, another uh, another reason why I think this is kind of like, not glitch, but it is a little we weird because uh, Tariq Cohen was here almost round 30 for me. So I'm going to take Eckler there. Uh, if you're really trying to cheesy, you can just grab a bunch of really decent dev running backs. You know, Kenyon Drake. Damian Williams, you know, any of the running backs really, and uh, land yourself some very good trades. Let's see if, uh, like, a John Ross is there. John Ross is there. He's 20, 75 years of age, pretty fast still. You know, might as well take him. Another really good uh, steal here, Troy Apke. I believe that's his name anyway. Super fast safety. We didn't really land a safety because, once again, for some reason, the game glitched out and just Ronnie Harrison was nowhere to be found. I'm not saying he's the greatest safety in the world, but... That was my pick, and he's not there. And you guys can see, the safety position didn't change one bit. You still have OB from like 5 to 10 rounds ago. You might as well take him. You know, these are basically all steals and a half. Obviously, they're not guaranteed to do anything for you, but just players that are pretty damn good. Hell, half the punters are still there. Might as well 
I mean, it's over his almost pick 50 or pick 40. You might as well take uh, Mahak as well. Uh, obviously, we didn't grab a fullback. Probably should have grabbed one a little bit earlier. Still probably a ton here. Yeah, there is. He got uh, Patrick Rickard. Definitely worth the pick. Uh, but basically, we have a full roster. You guys know that you could still get tons of value picks. Once again, if you're really trying to cheese it, you could probably still be drafting running backs to trade. Uh, but we're going to go to the end of the draft, and we're going to see, A, what the team looks like, and B, we're going to sim the season. Obviously, we're not going to use the team, so we might not be the greatest team in the world simply for the fact that, obviously, we went the smart route, maybe took a little bit lower of position overalls uh, just because, obviously, we're, uh, we're smarter. We're not going to be taking Tom Brady when we can take you know, Carson Wentz or something, you know. You're not going to take the super high overall just because they're really uh, good. You're going to go for the long term. Obviously, if you're going one year, that's completely irrelevant. So it seems the offensive scheme isn't super great, but that, I mean, I'm not really worried about that. I'd probably just find something that has Lamar as the scheme fit just because Lamar is basically your most important player for the first season. I'm assuming he's some sort of scrambler type. He's scrambler. But you could always just keep him here and just try to work up that strong arm. I mean, obviously, I'd probably go field general. But, you know, once again, he is your most important player. Uh, defensively, we have to change that scheme. I know it says we're a 90% fit. But once we move players around, the 4-3 will be the best for us. I guess we're 95 anyways. At least defensive scheme looks good. Offense kind of works like that automatically anyways. So it is probably going to be pretty hard to get players off of fantasy teams year one but you can still obviously get draft picks pretty damn easily so just for the sake of trying to make a better overall team we'll put Obi Melifon who have free safety since technically both players do need to work up their dev and overall anyways so we'll put Obi there just for like I said the sake of having a better overall team so basically I put everything on 200% XP just about uh the three guys on the practice obviously this could vary for anyone Lamar Jackson easily the most important player in my opinion DJ Chark, because I think with so much potential, I think he's worth just going all in on. I mean, 93 jumping, 94 speed, 93 excel. I mean, you just can't teach that kind of stuff. It's ridiculous. Uh, his ball moves aren't even that bad for a guy. His overall and his size. And then the final one, this one can vary, but because I would be using Roquan and easily get probably 10 picks a season, uh, I had Jair on there. Maybe even a Josh Jackson could fit there. They're going to send to the playoffs and see exactly how good this team was. Once again, it's a lower overall team, so I don't even expect much. Uh, but hey, 11-5. and five, And that comes from a division with a great uh, team. And look at this. Lamar Jackson wins MVP. I will show you guys in and cheat. I honestly did not expect that to happen. In fairness, that's, that's kind of wild. I did not expect Lamar to win MVP at all. Uh, just in case you have exactly the same team and you wanted to replicate or try to replicate exactly what we did. This is everything. This is everything I had on it. I let the AI uh, do the development or what you know the upgrading. Here's the schemes we had as well. Uh, in case and once again trying to look at that vertical zone run base four three Green Bay Green Bay. Uh, obviously it doesn't matter what team probably you run, but if you want exactly that and you're trying to sim, I don't know. Just stop yelling at me, okay? Here's the stat line: Lamar Jackson. 4,300 yards, 43 touchdowns, 11 picks. Obviously, that's going to vary as well. Not a whole lot of touchdowns from McCaffrey, but still a great season. Did he go up in dev? He stayed dev, which is a little shocking. Actually, is he a one-year? I don't know if it actually factors for players that weren't actual rookies, but I don't know. Tyreek Hill, that's probably a super. It is a superstar dev for uh, Tyreek. DJ Chark, surprisingly, didn't go up in dev. Evan Ingram? Really? I'm surprised both of them didn't go up in dev. John Ross is still normal. That's perfectly fine. Still a really good season. Offensive line, pretty solid stuff. Can't be com uh, you know, complaining about that. Sack totals, Roquan had a lot. But Carl, I mean, look at Carl Lawson. That's got to be a dev up. Really now? This game really trying to cuck us, huh? Star dev for DeForest. At least he went up. Uh, Roquan, did he go up? Roquan's still star, but he's probably really good overall. Didn't even look, to be honest. Davenport, probably more of a user type thing for him to have success. Jair, that's probably a superstar. Really, not a superstar dev from him. But still, 90-plus overall, ridiculous stuff. Uh, Jake Elliott did very well, too. Let's take a look at all the awards for the hell of it. Lamar Jackson was MVP. Roquan Smith was Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year was Lamar Jackson. Defensive Rookie of the Year was Roquan. Lamar Jackson was the best QB. Best wide receiver was Tyreek Hill. 
Uh, best linebacker surprisingly wasn't Roquan. Jair barely missed best DB. So, I mean, you can see uh, Jair, I don't even think, won a single award, and he still had a really good uh, overall. I mean, you see Chark, he went up quite a bit. He went up, what, eight overalls and didn't even get a dev up. His Excel, I believe, went up one. I mean, this is just a really good season. You know, I expected it, but still, Ryan Shazier, what over, what dev is he? He did go up in dev, so there's that. Roquan, um, Rashawn did not. Jabril, did he? he? It appears he went up in. Did he actually go up in dev? I don't even know if he did. No, I don't think he did, actually. He was already, was he already quick? I thought he was normal, man, I swear. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's let's take a look at the pro, uh, the playoffs, I suppose. See, if we even win a game? Probably not. We beat the the Panthers, playing against our division rivals. We beat them, going against the championship uh, Cowboys. We did lose by three. So to show you guys, I didn't you know force any wins to try and prove my uh, legacy. We'll go to postseason. You can see here, didn't force any wins. But I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous. I think this video could not have went any better. Lamar went to 99 overall. I mean, I know technically he's not 99, but he's because he's 97 plus two. The slider, did he actually gain a speed on the season? Wow, that's impressive. I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, I mean, that's just ridiculous. D backers, he needs some work. Show you guys the sliders. In case, once again, you want to see the full length. I didn't even have 200% for QB. I, I, I tried to pretty much put everything on 200. You could probably move the offensive line a little bit higher. But yeah, I mean, that's my guide. Once again, I don't think this could have went any better. I think it went next to perfectly. You guys seen, without forcing any wins, without doing any crazy weird stuff, the team without any user control became an 87 overall at the end of the year. Lamar Jackson's the greatest quarterback of all time, basically in Madden history, potentially. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just a great team. Lots of potential. Uh, and yeah, it's just... Glad it went out the way it did. And hopefully you guys, you know, hopefully this helped you guys. If it did, please leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Normally don't ask for that, but once again, this thing was just great. It was just one of my best videos, honestly. Just information-wise, overall, just results-wise. Yeah, if you have any suggestions for me, you know, maybe you've, you've seen something that could have went better. Uh, maybe there was a pick that I should have taken instead. You know, there's a couple of guys that it didn't go according to plan. There was a couple of players like Ronnie Harrison that I wanted. Somehow he wasn't there. Tariq Cohen would have been a nice little pick. Somehow he wasn't there. Um, let me know in the comment section if you have any ideas in the future. You know, maybe I did a series before that you want another update to. Let me know. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see.